I never knew what it meant to be alive before playing Persona 3, and now I'm crying over a fucking robot. Persona 3 is such an amazing game, and I didn't realize that at first. I first experienced the story of Persona 3 through Persona 3 Portable, and I was so conflicted at the end. How did people like Persona 3? Why do people adore it? I just never got it. On June 11th, we get news in the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase, or from Atlas itself, given that they leaked both Persona announcements. Persona 3 was getting a remake from the ground up, and man, it looked amazing. And you could tell that Atlas was applying from what it learned from Persona 5 here. While I was initially disappointed with no Switch version, and the lack of content from FES or Portable, I love Persona 3 now. What the fuck was I thinking before with Portable? Like I've mentioned before, I didn't like Persona 3 and that extends to the party members. While I did like some, that being Gikari, Aegis, and Junpei, I didn't really care for the others. Reload, on the other hand, made me appreciate every character and made me love every character so much more. It's mainly thanks to Link episodes, a new form of interaction with a male party member since the original never had social links with them for whatever reason. Reload also recast nearly every character save for Elizabeth and honestly, I think it's for the best. While the original cast is iconic, they also made an elementary schoolers sound like they were a smoker in their mid-30s. I feel like the new voice acting helped me to appreciate these characters a lot more, with the main one being Akihiko, who felt like a completely different character here. Reload also added group study sessions, which has you and some other characters just studying and it's awesome. I listened and stopped there since now every character has a hangout event. You can brush Kuromaru's fur, watch a TV show with Yukari, or tend to the garden with Junpei. Do this enough times and you can increase the energy, a new mechanic that I'll talk about later. So why didn't I like C's before? Is it because they had strong friendships and I didn't? No, not at all. It's not like they had no development in the original versions, but outside of story events and social links, there was nothing there. It's the new things in Reload that makes me really appreciate Cease a lot more, especially with the male party members. And it also makes me sad just knowing what happens at the end of the game, knowing that we probably won't see them again. Anyways, with that said, I'll head into the character analysis now. The first instance where Reload fully flipped my opinion on a character was on the infamous day on October 4th. The day where Shinjiro dies. I'll be completely honest and say that I didn't feel anything when Shinjiro died in Persona 3 Portable and I know that makes me sound like a sociopath. But hear me out. In the original releases of Persona 3, Shinjiro barely has any screen time in the game, which is understandable and doesn't really change in Reload. The difference is now, he finally feels like a character. One of the new additions to Reload are the Link episodes, which I've mentioned before. Link episodes are effectively social links for the party members, but with a big twist to them. Shinjiro gets a Link episode and made me completely flip-flop on his character and he became one of my favorite characters in the game. At first, Shinjiro was only a character to move along the plot, but now, I see Shinjiro as a real, breathing person who's actually awesome. Well, he's not breathing, but you get the point. Shinjiro's Link episode revolves around the MC and Mitsuru trying to get the dude back into school since he dropped out after, you know. It's made even worse when you get the backstory of Akihiko, Mitsuru, and Shinjiro back when they were the only C's members. Makes this whole Link episode hurt that much more. I already cried seeing Shinjiro die, even though I knew it was going to happen, but I cried even more when I saw how his death affected Akihiko. It hurt so much seeing Shinjiro's death affect Akihiko and the rest of C's. It was already a dark day, but I got even more emotional seeing Akihiko break down. It just feels crazy to me how Reload has improved my opinion on Persona 3 as a whole. I mean, I already knew what was going to happen. I knew that Shinjiro was going to die, and I already seen it, and yet... I understand. I finally see the vision. I finally understand why Persona 3 is so beloved. Akihiko in general is amazing here, and I love his character a lot more than I did in the original. In the older versions of Persona 3, he just felt like a sticky upperclassman like Mitsuru. He's also a boxer, but that's it. But here, he's silly, and has a lot more depth than I could ever imagine. I don't know if it was ever discussed anywhere or if I'm just dumb, which is a real possibility. But Akihiko's backstory is just tragic and compounds the tragedies in the game, and yet, continues to move on. I just love him a lot, and he's amazing. Junpei was already one of my favorite characters in the original game. He's a typical bro character of the Persona games, but given so much more character and expanded. I loved his arc with Chidori, and it made him feel incredibly human. Reload made him even better to the point where I could cry. And that's not an exaggeration. It's like before, I knew that Chidori was going to die, and yet, seeing her actually die broke me as it did Junpei, who I have to say the voice actor did a phenomenal job. I could feel his pain, and it was heartbreaking. And hey, if you manage to save Chidori, which is fucking awesome, you get to witness such a beautiful scene. You get to witness Junpei crying and being so happy. It just fills me with joy in a way that no other Persona game has ever made me feel. 
Koromaru is pretty cool too here. Yeah, he's just a dog, and while that did initially annoy me when I played Portable, honestly, I'm okay with that now. His Link episode, while not groundbreaking, goes more into what happened to him pre cease The promise that you make with him also just hurts a lot, since you know at this point, Makoto fucking dies. This part is going to sound horrible, but I fucking hated Ken in the original, mainly because of his voice. You'll be glad to hear that instead of sounding like a smoker in their mid-30s, Ken actually sounds like an elementary schooler now. This part mainly compounds what I said before with Shinjiro's death being a lot better here, but yeah. I liked Ken a lot more, but it's also thanks to his Link episode. I just like seeing him act more like a regular kid, but also a kid that's been through a lot, and thus acts more mature than he needs to be. Hikari is probably my favorite female character, Taitha, I guess. I just love her in the game, and not just because of how cute she is with the protagonist. I already loved Hikari a lot thanks to her continued role in the story. In fact, that's something I really enjoyed in Persona 3, since in Persona 4 and 5, characters would get most of their story done in the arc they're introduced in, and then they're just set aside. I just really like her growth as a character. Also, I really liked her scenes with the protagonist. I thought they were really cute. Okay, goodbye. So, Fuka. She's alright. Moving on. Nah, I should talk about her for real. So, to me, Fuka feels like the weakest party member. Her social link isn't too interesting, her story in the role isn't too interesting, and there's not a lot I can say about her other than she's cute. Fuka isn't bad, but she isn't A-rank material. I do like how she was upgraded in Reload, gameplay-wise. In Tartarus, she has new abilities that helps a lot. There's jamming, which makes enemies ignore you. You can also completely analyze an enemy so you instantly know what weaknesses or strengths it has. All this helps to make Fuka have a way more active role in battle. And the best part is that she has a Theurgy. It gives a party-wide buff, and in the best case, restores SP, making her essential. And if you do use Theurgy, you don't have to waste a turn, so it's 100% worth it. Mitsuru is pretty cool. Not much has changed, but I still like her a good amount. She's a good and stern leader, and I thought she was funny as usual. And her voice actress was really good. Other than that, there's not much I can say about her that hasn't been said already. I guess. There are no words to describe how much I loved her in the original, and how much I love her here. She was my favorite character in the game that I considered to be disappointing, so that's saying a lot. I loved her growth as a character, from a soulless robot, to a robot with real human emotions. You could even hear her growth as a character through the original versions, because of the voice acting going less robotic over time, which I enjoyed a lot. Compounding this with a phenomenal social link that made me adore her even more, it's hard for me to not consider I guess to be the best character in Persona 3. Though I have to say, the final part in Social Link is sus as hell. I guess it's just as good here as she was in the other versions. While people might not like how her voice acting changes here, with it not changing over time and saying softly robotic, I'm honestly okay with that. Her performance is still amazing and still helps to make I guess one of my favorite characters in the entire series. She's an incredibly sweet character, and I still love her so much and you have no idea. I don't like silent protagonists. Not at all. I feel like they can hurt the impact of a game and overall are just used way too much in JRPGs. I understand why they can be used, but more than often, I feel like a game that utilizes a silent protagonist would be way better if said protagonist actually spoke. I believe this for Persona 4 and especially Persona 5. Here though, being a silent protagonist actually works for Makoto. His character is generally apathetic and it works well with it works well with how his character is set up, especially with the story. Makoto being a silent protagonist is actually kind of perfect. But yeah, since Makoto is a silent protagonist, there's not much for me to say about him. He's silent, emo, and yeah. Persona 3 Portable was a slog to get through. Obvious flatness aside, I just did not like Tartarus at all, and it was horrible. There's no redeeming it. While yeah, the floors are already going to feel very samey thanks to them being auto-generated, it didn't help at all that for the entire game, the layout does not change at all. You go through the same hallway, the same staircase, I understand the theme and why it has to be randomly generated. What I don't understand is why it has to be fucking bullshit. It was easily the worst part about Persona 3 for me, and I hated it so much. And that's why I'm happy Tartarus changed a lot here. It's still auto-generated, of course, but the first big change here is the change in perspective. Unlike the original's overhead view, you have a completely free camera. This helps for a lot of obvious reasons, and a change that I welcome. The next and arguably biggest change that makes Tartarus better is how every block has a unique generation. I mean, looking back at it, it's nothing too much, but it goes a long way. Tartarus no longer feels the same for the entire game. For me, I got sick of Tartarus really quickly and I was only on the second block. And that's why I really love the changes here in Reload, even if it's not too much. It honest to god sounds like the weirdest compliment you could have for a game, but I swear if you've played an older version of Persona 3, then you understand how bad Tartarus is. I also have to mention all the new animations at play here which makes Tartarus feel a lot more alive. 
which sounds weird, but hear me out. There's just so much more detail put into here, and I'm really happy that Atlas changed Tartarus a lot. Though, I'm not done at all. A big part on why I disliked Persona 3 was because of all the grinding. Aside from being easier, mainly thanks to theurgy and shifting, grinding is non-existent here. There's this big door looking thing that'll appear in Tartarus. You need to unlock a treasure chest to open the door, and when you do, you get transported to this room with a big clock looking thing. This lets two party members to instantly level up to the level your MC is at. And it's good. Why Alice didn't just do EXP share for the entire party, I will never understand. I think they're pissing us off on purpose at this point. The last major change, and the one that I wish was explored more, was Monad Doors. Monad Doors? Don't know. Monad Doors, which aren't to be confused with Monado, are new challenge battles, kind of? They offer an increased challenge with pretty nice rewards, but but they're just okay. I ignored all of them except for the first one and until I was at the end of the game. These bosses aren't challenging at all or interesting. Except for the last one, which pisses me off. The final boss does a thing that an enemy should never do in a video game. Heal themselves. And I never managed to beat it. Social links or confidants in Persona 5 are the building blocks of the Persona series to me. They help to tell side stories and a little of the grander story. I won't lie though, I think the social links here are just kind of weak overall. Should I also mention that there's the social link where you can actually fall in love with your teacher? With that said, 3 also has some amazing social links. The main party members, aside from Fuka and the male party members, have pretty good social links, and especially Igis. It's through this social link that she figures out who she is and what it means to be human. It's enough to make a grown man cry. And then, there's Akinari, perhaps the most famous social link here. Akinari is a teenager who's dying and there's nothing we can do about it. The social link is beautiful, and one that I appreciate a lot. While his story was sad, I never cried during one of his ranks. Why? It's because his social link was less about his eventual death, and more about his legacy, his book, his life. And that perfectly represents the themes of Persona 3. Even though Persona 3 is dark, even though Persona 3 is heartbreaking, the point is to live on, and to live your best life. And I find that beautiful. And then I cried like a little bitch talking to his mother, he's just... Oh... For every bad social link out there, for every Kenji, or for every Nozomi, there's an Akinari, or an Igus. I've already mentioned Link episodes before, but they're an amazing addition. As you know already, the original release never had social links for the male party members. Portable did, but Reload isn't a remake of that. So instead, Link episodes help so much to grow these characters, and I hope to see them return for future Persona games in lieu of social links for the party members. One of the best parts about Persona 5 was its combat, with it being quick, adding a lot of new mechanics, and being expressive as hell. It's all thanks to the combat UI, animations, and honestly, everything. It's insanely satisfying to land a critical or to get a one more. Nothing feels slow, and that's amazing. It's so awesome to the point where Alice has adopted this face button scheme to a lot more of their RPGs, like Soul Hackers 2, Metaphor Refantasio, and now Persona 3 Reload. My only problem with Persona 5's combat is that it's too easy. It's as easy as eating cotton candy, and let me tell you, that's damn easy. As per the norm, Persona 3 Reload utilizes the one more system. With this, after you target an enemy's weakness and knock it down, you can attack again. It's already pretty good in Persona 3, but it lacked a lot of the foundations that would make it excellent in future titles. Reload brings two new major mechanics to combat, with the first being Shift. Essentially, Shift is Persona 5's baton passes, but instead, they don't provide any buffs, which I'm a fan of. The second new addition, and my favorite, is Theurgy. I love this new mechanic. The equivalent feature in Persona 5 was Showtimes, which were cool, but not that interesting to me. They all did the same thing with no unique effect. The animation was cool, but went on for too long. It's like constipation, but arguably worse. Theurgies, on the other hand, are awesome. While you have to wait until a certain date to unlock Theurgy, it's well worth the wait. Every party member has a Theurgy, and they're all unique and actually tied to the character themselves. In order to use a Theurgy, you have to build it up. The way you build it up is through a characteristic condition, which varies for every character. Let's use Ikari for example. In order to use her Theurgy, you have to heal allies. Do this a couple of times, and you unlock access for her Theurgy. Her Theurgy does severe wind enemy to a single enemy, while ignoring any resistances. Why is that a healing focus ability for a healer focused character? I do not know. All the Theurgies are good and have their time and place, and I love them. Though, you may be wondering, how does this affect difficulty? Does it make the game easier? Does it break leveling? It turned a somewhat difficult game into something that's brain dead easy. Whether that's good or not depends on you. While it does break the difficulty, I'm honestly fine with that. Theurgy makes combat a lot more dynamic and helps to put more strategy into a fight. Junpei's Theurgy, in fact, gives him a brand new use, making him more of a crit focused character. And then there's Ken, originally one of the worst characters in the original combat wise, and he's now one of the best honestly. His second theurgy heals the entire party to full, and reflects one physical and magical attack 
for the entire party. And it gets even better. It charges faster when you don't have a lot of SP. And then Atlas thought it was a good idea for Ken to restore SP every turn. Since the protagonist is a wild card, they have a wide array of Thurgies to use. These are essentially the replacement to fusion spells in the original, which I think is a good thing. I didn't use them a lot in the original because I just wanted to hoard them. Here, I can use them at any time without worrying. I just love this mechanic and I hope to see it return in the future. Though, if we ever do see it again in a future Persona game, I hope it's nerfed, or at least balanced better. The third and least talked about combat change to Persona 3 Reload is Card Shuffle, which has changed a lot since its original release. In the original release of Persona 3, Card Shuffle was completely random since you couldn't see the cards, and what do I think about it? It's bullshit. Here though, it's awesome. After maxing a social link, you get a new Arcana card which gives a great boost. If you get enough of these Arcana cards, you then get access to heavily buffed cards which either heals a lot more, gives a lot more money, or gives a lot more EXP. Just a heads up, I'm a music enjoyer, but not a music master. So while I don't know what makes a song good, I can probably guess and put my thoughts onto it. Something that I've realized while making this video is how good the music here is, and how good Persona 3 uses the music for storytelling. Like Tartarus, for example, its main theme is just horrible. It's like if you scratch knives onto each other, it's just not pleasant. But it works amazingly in the context of what Tartarus is, a horrible fucking tower that's horrible to climb. And as you get further up the tower, slowly more elements are added to it, with a piano at first, and then eventually Eventually, a violin at the very end, making perfect sense. While I didn't notice a change in either of my playthroughs of Portable or Reload, this is still a great way to tell a story through music. The new music in the game is also amazing. We have a new opening here called Full Moon Full Life. It's my favorite in the series. It combines amazing animation and music. I just find myself quietly singing some parts to it because it's that great. The full version just elevates it to new heights and that has me really excited for what Persona 6 opening is going to be. If it's anything less, then I'm going to be extremely disappointed. I I don't know what I would do, but it would be good, so beware Atlas. And then there's It's Going Down Now, which is also a phenomenal combat song and my favorite in the series. And it was a big reason why I would always try to ambush an enemy. Controversial opinion time, but I hate mass destruction. It's ass cheeks. I just don't like it that much. It ain't bad, but it's nowhere near as good as other combat songs in future Persona games like Reach for the Truth or Last Surprise. Combine me not liking that with a 60 hour runtime of Persona 3 Portable and... It's no surprise that I got sick of it, so that's why I adore It's Going Down now. It's a great breath of fresh air, while also generally being just a great combat song on top of that. And then, there's Color Your Night. <laughs> There's no getting grounded. Persona 3 Reload is not the definitive version of Persona 3. It is the best version in my eyes, but it's definitely not definitive because Atlas are stupid little fucks. That said, it's not entirely their fault. After the originals were released in 2006, Persona 3 got an enhanced version. This would be Persona 3 FES, which added a new social link for Aegis, new changes to daily life, and an epilogue called The Answer. It would star Aegis and... That's all I know since I've never played the answer. Ellis would reveal that the answer is coming, but as DLC to reload for $30. I would kill myself if I ever had to spend over $100 for a remake of a PS2 game. So, moral of the story, Xbox Game Pass is amazing. And aside from the PlayStation 3 re-release, Persona 3 FES has never been available on any other platforms. While the answer is hated mainly for its gameplay, there's a reason why people wanted the answer in Persona 3 Reload. Reload would also cut content from the original release, with different social link routes. And then there's Persona 3 Portable, which I played. It was yet another re-release, but one of the more divisive ones for quite a few reasons. And as you can see, it's as flat as Paper Mario since Alice had to get Persona 3 running on a PSP. I only had two weeks complete reload so even if they did include this, I wouldn't be able to play it. Even so, that still sucks considering this was $70 at launch. This was the first way I played Persona 3, and I regret it now. That said, Persona 3 Portable wasn't all for naught. Portable would get a brand new protagonist, commonly referred to FemC, and if you've spent any time on the internet, then you should know that FemC is one of the series' favorite protagonists. So guess how people reacted when we learned that FemC wasn't going to be a part of Reload? The fans did it themselves, and it's incredibly impressive. FemC not being part of Reload hurts less, given that Persona 3 Portable is still accessible, but it still hurts that Alice couldn't make a definitive version of Persona 3 and that Reload cut some content from the original, but I digress. I also think 
gets disappointing that there are no new personas here, since FES and Portable add new ones, but it's whatever to me. I think the thing that I like the most here is that Alice didn't add any of the Dancing or Arena Ultimax outfits here, which confuses me a lot. I know that Makoto and Shinjiro never had the equivalent in Arena Ultimax for various reasons, but it's still weird. I also think that not letting the main protagonist build any weapon is weird. It's also weird as hell that they added the Juness theme for Tartarus. Like, what the fuck? Just a heads up, this section of the video has spoilers for the game. Proceed with caution. While it takes a while for the story of Persona 3 to get good, it gets really good, especially in the last arc of the game. That said, I won't talk about the entire story as I don't want to waste your time. The game is amazing, it tackles themes of death, but also appreciating life to its fullest. And I'm sad to say that. It took until playing Reload for me to fully appreciate the story and its themes. Before playing Reload, I didn't like Persona 3. Maybe it was because I played the portable version, but I still didn't like the story. The gameplay felt repetitive to me. While the characters did have death, I didn't love most of them. And at the end of Persona 3 Portable, I was so confused. How did people like this? But even with all that, I'm glad I got to experience Persona 3 Portable. I knew there was a diamond in the rough. Playing Persona 3 Portable helped to enhance my playthrough of Persona 3 Reload, and I'm grateful for that. I won't talk about all the aspects of the story since that would take forever. Instead, I'll go over the, my favorite part about the story. The final arc of the game. The atmosphere here is truly the best in the entire game to me, and even the best in the franchise. We're on the final mission, and the most important one. Our mission is to defeat an unbeatable demon. The music that plays in the city, Memories of the City, is perfect and perfectly represents the feeling here. The lighting in the dorm has changed, and it's muted. You see more and more lost ones, and overall, it gives a perfect feeling of what's going on in the game currently, and it made me put down the controller for a second. I did this because of how good the song is, but also because it directly references Memories With You, the credit song, and that reminded me how little time I had with the game. I know I've made tons of jokes throughout this video, but the story is really special. It's a masterpiece, and I'm honestly mad at myself that I never realized until I played Reload. Fast forward to the final boss, there are some aspects that Alice improved, and others made for the worst. Let's start by being positive, and it's the lighting. It's not as mean as the other versions, but I'm fine with that. The other aspect which I'm kind of mixed on is the fight itself. It was a breeze, which on one hand, that's good. I don't want to fight dicks for 10 fucking hours. And on the other hand, it's too easy, it's like throwing a baby across the room. I'll be honest and admit that I was probably a fucking idiot when I played Portable since I took 10 hours to beat the final boss. But at least it felt satisfying. At least I had to work hard to get to that point. But in Reload, it just feels underwhelming to me and I only died once. Though at the same time, I imagine I'd be pissed as hell spending another 10 hours fighting Nyx. Even after you defeat Nyx, they still stand strong and tall, and they push the members of Cease to the ground. And that's when we see the general population waking up in the dark hour to witness the end. We lose more and more hope. Until Igor appears. Getting to see all the social links that you fully max out encouraging you, giving you hope, is incredible. It's moments like this that I adore. It makes getting and completing every social link feel like it's worth it. Thanks to your help, each person or persons are doing better, and now they're helping you. And with that hope being poured into Makoto, and somehow, Makoto walks forwards and flies into the falling moon. In this moment, it's heartbreaking seeing the other members of Seas feel desperate since they don't want to lose another friend. All of them have gone through so much trauma in this game. For Akihiko, it was Shinjiro. For Mitsuru, it was her father. For Junpei, it was Shidori. For Yukari, it was her father. For Ken, it was his mother. For Koromaru, it was his owner. And for Fuka, it was... Bullying? But after this, it's the final battle. This is where Burn Your Dread finally gets to play, and man, it feels earned. The final arc is the best of the entire game. I already know what's going to happen. I know the ending. I know that Makoto dies. And yet, the ending is still beautiful, and even more so than before. Getting to see the cutscene where the members of Seas remember again is beautiful. The whole monologue with Igus is beautiful. The music is beautiful. And this entire moment is beautiful. And I can't wait to come back in September to witness the answer.